Hello and thank you for joining us today here at the Bramble Patch. My name is Wendy and on technicals today we have Alicia. First of all, I'd like to say a big thank you to all of you that have emailed and messaged us uh, letting us know how much you're enjoying the tutorials. Um, it really does us good to know that you're enjoying them and that you're actually making a lot of the things that we're actually demonstrating. Um, I've had messages from not just all over the UK, but all over the world. We've had them from Australia, uh, from Janine in Michigan, and people have been sending us photographs and everything, and we really, really appreciate it. And apart from the tutorials, um, it's been nice to get the feedback, uh, knowing how grateful you are for the rest of the team here at the Bramble Patch. Uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg uh, with me being on the screen and Alicia on technicals. Um, there's a big team behind the Bramble Patch, uh, right down from to the ordering, the designing, the cutting of all the fabrics to make the bundles and all the ideas and everything that comes up and all the online orders uh, that the rest of the team do. Uh, also the quilt room that are still currently quilting customers quilts for you. You can still send them in and the girls will phone you back and you can discuss uh, what you'd like designs having on them, um, the pantograph designs or the colour threads that you prefer to have and the girls can talk anything through with you. So all the team here are still very committed to try and help you in every way they possibly can. So a big thank you to you for letting us know that you're happy with what we're doing and the rest of the team and myself and Alicia really appreciate you letting us know that, so thank you. Uh, another thing we're going to, I'm just gonna inform you of, if you go onto the home page of the Bramble Patch, to the top left hand corner and scroll down right at the bottom of the menu you will now see uh, an additional line has been added which is the demos so if you go to the demos and click on it you will be able to see all the previous demos that we've done for the tutorials and you can just click on there and it will take you directly to the link for the youtube and you can watch them as many times as you want you can watch it pause it do a little bit and carry on. So that's a new addition to our homepage that we thought might help some of you uh, find the tutorials that you're looking for a little bit easier. So today we're going to be looking and doing um, a mitre on a border. So this is not a mitre on a binding, this is not to bind your fabric, this is to do a mitre on a border. So I've got a little example here to show you. So here we go. If I just lift this one up, you'll probably recognise the whole piece if I just hold it up. You'll see that this is the sample that I was actually working on when I did the traditional crazy patchwork um, a few weeks ago. And what I've done now, I've finished the centre part of it. And what I thought I'd do is I'll show you how to do this lovely mitre here uh, that you can use on various things. And because this is crazy patchwork, I thought it was an ideal way for me to actually do using different fabrics on each of the sides to show you this little point here and then show you how flat it actually lays. So this technique um, is perfect if you want to put it, uh, use it uh, whilst you're making a cushion or actually on the borders of quilts. They look really, really nice. And it's really not as difficult as people think. The other thing that I'd like to show you, just hanging behind me, is um, an attic window that I did um, a few years ago. Now this is not a current panel. I did do this a few years ago. But on here, there's uh, two different ways that I teach doing um, attic windows. But here on this particular one, I've used the mitered, um, the traditional mitered um, version of it, so that you don't have a line across here or here. Uh, and this is the technique that I use generally, but when I do a class for attic windows, I always teach both methods. That way it, you have the knowledge then to try and out whichever works for you the best. So first of all, like I said, this is, if I hold this up, 
this is the finished cushion front that I started when I was doing the demo um, a few weeks ago. And I've done the mitered corners. And this has got a different fabric on each of the four sides um, of the um, block. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to work through and show you how to do it. And it's really not as difficult as you think. Um, if you want to try doing it, what I would suggest, if you just have a piece of fabric, um, probably you don't want to do it more uh, smaller than a 10 inch square to start with, that's adequate. Don't try and do it too small uh, because um, it's more difficult. It's a little bit more challenging if you do it smaller. So give yourself enough space. If you've got a piece 12 inches, brilliant, no problem at all. So first of all, what we're going to do I'm going to go back to yet another sample um, that I started when I was doing a tutorial. And uh, this was when I was actually demonstrating how to do the Dresden plate block. So the Dresden plate now, I've already now um, actually put this onto um, the background fabric. And if I just turn this over, you can see that I have actually blanket stitched it all the way around the Dresden plate and the center as well. So what we need to do to start with is actually mark the back of the fabric of a quarter of an inch markings. So I'm going to try and position it here so you can see it. So I'll work in this corner and I'm going to use a dark biro uh, because you will be able to see the markings that I'm doing a lot easier. So all you need to do is just use your ordinary ruler uh, with your quarter of an inch markings on, it doesn't matter what size, and lay the quarter of an inch line on the edge of the fabric. So I've got the quarter of an inch line lying on the edge of the fabric. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to put a line just on that section just there. I'll hold that up and show you, like so. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay the quarter of an inch line on the opposite side, like so. And I'm going to draw a line so it crosses the line I've already done. Because what I'm aiming for is this little junction here. The important part is the, is the point where those two lines cross over, okay? So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to very quickly mark the other corners. So I'm just lining my quarter of an inch line on the edge of the fabric, and I'm just drawing a line like so and like so now remember i am making these markings on the wrong side of the fabric i'll turn it down i'll just do one more corner for now quarter inch line on the edge of my fabric little line there and a little line Okay, so I have my corners marked. Now I'm going to take the piece of fabric that I'm going to use for the border. Right, now, if I just explain it in very simple measurements for you. If my square measures 16 inches, and I'm going to add a two inch strip to each side, so 16 plus two is 18, plus two is 20. Now, if you are absolutely sure that you have a quarter of an inch good measurement on your foot, you can cut your strip 20 inches. However, if you are in doubt, add another inch. So if it's, 20, if it's 16 plus two, 18, plus two, 20, and add one inch for good luck. 21 inch strip of fabric, okay? Now, all you need to do is take your strip of fabric 
And if you have a directional fabric, make sure it's obviously um, going, so the pattern's going out towards the edge of the work, if that's the way you want it. Just fold it in half, and just place a pin. All I'm doing is getting the center point of the strip of fabric. Likewise now, I will fold my block in half and I'm going to mark the center point of that with another pin, like so. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my border fabric and open it up. So I've got the right side of the fabric facing up of my border fabric and I'm going to place the block that I'm using and I'm going to put those pins at the same point. So now I know I've actually got that central. Like so. Now if you prefer to pin all the way along to make sure that these edges are flush that's fine. I I don't find I need to, but if, you, if you're happy to do that, then that's the way to go. Always do what is comfortable for you. Um, there's always lots of different ways people do this. This is just my preferred method. Uh, and it's not wrong if you choose to do it a different way. So what we're going to do now is we're going to sew, see if I can position this, from the point here where these two lines cross over, just here, we're going to sew with a quarter of an inch all the way along to the point here where it also crosses over. So we're not stitching the last quarter of an inch at the beginning or the end of that row of stitching. So I'm just going to take this over to the sewing machine now. And we've got actually the three cameras on today because uh, we was rather hoping that you might be able to see the positioning a little bit better um, as it's quite crucial that you actually place it in the right, uh, the, pin, the needle in the right place. Uh, it's not difficult. So here we go. So I'll just make sure these are level. So all I'm going to do now, make sure you've got the tails pulled out and I'm going to lower the needle directly into the spot where those lines cross over, which is what I've done. Okay. And I'm now going to sew. I've got the quarter of an inch foot on the sewing machine and I'm going to sew all the way down. I've still got that centre pin in, which I'm quite happy to leave in because this is going through beautifully. I've got no ripples or anything like that. I'm just approaching the pin now. So I'm just going to stop. I'm going to remove that pin. Just making sure that I've got the border strip level at the edge with the cushion front. And I'm sewing all the way along using my quarter of an inch seam. Right, now. It's up to you, I'm just gonna pop this needle down. Now, if you have a machine that can actually just sew the ending for you, then you can do that. Or you can just do a couple of little reverse stitches, but make sure you don't sew into the quarter of an inch seam. Okay, so I'm just going to raise my needle and remove that out of the work and just nip those threads off. So what I'm going to do now, just, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to press the seam. So the seam that I've just done, I'm actually going to press it towards the centre panel. Again, this is preference to how you want to do it. This is just the way I prefer to do it. You can always repress this at the end when you've done the full construction. Um, and press it outwards. So just because you press it this way to start with, 
I just think it actually makes life a little bit easier. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do exactly the same with the next edge. So the egg, it doesn't matter what order you do these in, quite honestly. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the edge now that is going to go up towards this one. So once again, I take my fabric, I fold it in half, and pop a pin in it. Once you get used to doing this, you can just put a little crease in it if you choose to. It's whatever works for you. And I'll push that over. So I've just got the center of that as well. And I'm just gonna pop a little pin in there and open that back up. Right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to, once again, I'm going to open that up. And, oops, that off, that was silly. Just going to roll that over, just double check that. I, as I lifted it, I pulled the pin out, but it doesn't matter. It's a two second quick fix that I can do there. And I'm just going to pop that pin in there. So now I've got that central. So what I'm going to do now is I'm now going to sew once again, right from this point just here, I'm going to sew all the way along. So you're going to leave this um, literally loose. If you prefer to, you can just pin and tuck that out of the way because you don't want to get that caught. Okay, so now I'm going to sew from where those two lines crisscross all the way along to again the same section where they cross so you're not sewing into the quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I'll just quickly do that. This goes together really, really nicely. And I'll show you the back of the other one as well. So, so where we worked all the way through doing a mitre. Um, it's very effective. It's quite a satisfying thing to do. So you make sure that you don't stitch over the um, stitches you've already done because that way you get a piece in it. Um, but I'm just pointing out all the scenarios that could happen, but all you need to do is just think it through and just work through it. So I'm just placing the needle down into that point and I'm just going to start sewing. If you prefer, you can do a little back stitch. Again, if you have on your sewing machine um, a stitch that sews the end in, but it isn't necessary. You can do it either way around. Just gonna pull that through a little bit. I prepared these fabrics yesterday and in transporting them, the cream one is quite in the middle. But this is what it does. So once again, I'm now approaching the pin. So I'm just going to remove that at a 90 degree angle so you don't twist the fabric underneath. Move the iron that way. So I'm approaching the crisscross on there again now. I'll do one more stitch and reverse. Once again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press that seam towards the main body um, of the cushion. So I'm just going to give that a little press, like so. Now comes the clever part where you're going to make the mitre. So I'm just going to remove that one because I have that pinned out of the way just to make sure I didn't catch anything. So this is exactly why I choose to do it this way. Because if you, um, just nip these threads off. 
if your quarter of an inch seam isn't quite a quarter and um, you've misjudged it slightly, it can throw the edge off. So I prefer to do it this way. So I'm hoping this is the corner we're working on. So first of all, I've laid out that border strip completely flat on the cutting board. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay the other one straight over it. And you can see, I've over um, exaggerated this so that you can see it on the camera. And you can see here that we've got a crisscross. So what I need to do now is cut this piece so it's the same width as this and this one as well. So I'm hoping if I leave this positioned here, these are laying beautifully flat. So all I need now is my rotary cutter. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my ruler on the edge of the border fabric and I'm just going to nip that piece off. Very minimal. Like I said, I allowed it, I allowed it on the ones I quoted so you'd have half an inch, but I've done it this way so that you can actually see better um, what I'm talking about. And all I'm going to do now, I'm not going to move anything. I'm now going to move the ruler around, place it on the edge of that fabric. And by doing this, you can also do a double check to make sure that the line here is sitting flush on that one as well. That way you know you're getting a 90 degree corner. So all you do then is just knit that one up like so. Now, we've got a nice 90 degree square corner, which is exactly what we're aiming for. Um, now, what we can do now, there's two or three different ways again of doing it. I'm going to just um, show you the way I prefer to do it, and I don't have any problem. I've got a pin under here and I can't find it. There we go. Right, so if you noticed, when I laid it down, I laid the one horizontal down first and the one vertical over the top. Because what it means now, all I need to do is lift the vertical, hold it right in this corner and roll it over like so. Now, all we need to do, it's very, very simple, is lay those two border strips on top of each other like so. Now, because we pressed the seams into the center, all the seams are moving away. And here, you can hopefully see, you've got the little piece, little point of it sticking up, and that's pointing the right way. So it's gonna keep everything out of the way. So what we're going to do, we are going to sew from not, don't go directly in the last stitch of the strip, is just literally a hair's breadth away from it. If you go into it, sometimes you can pucker it. So just an absolute smidgen away from it. And we're going to sew right the way along to that corner. Now, normally when I do it, because I'm used to doing this, I will actually place um, a pin here. And here because it's going to hold it in position. And I pin it, because I'm going to sew from the point out, I sew it so that if, if I want to remove these, I can pull them away and not pull back on itself because otherwise um, it just, it's seamless if you do it that way. It just makes life a lot easier. So now what I would normally do is just go to the sewing machine and sew here. If you're not comfortable with doing that, then draw a line on it. So once again, I've got a pen here. So all you need to do, I'm going to remove that because I've got a flat pin there. Um, I'm going to place the ruler where the edge of the last, right at the point of the last stitch. And then I'm going to take the ruler to the corner. And I am going to draw a line. 
Remember, this is on the inside. Now I'm using a biro, you would only just use a fabric marker. I'm using a biro so that you can actually see. So there we go, I've drew it. So all I'm going to do now, if I can just hold it, I'm going to sew from here down to the point. And once you've done a few of these, um, it's, it's just so easy. Now, if you want to turn it over, it depends which way you want to work. I normally turn it over and work the other way, so I've got the bulk on the other side, but for demonstration purposes, it was easier for me to show you this way. So I'm going to take this to my sewing machine. Oops, move that iron out of the way. I'm going to lower my needle right to the side, right to the side of that last stitch that was there, like so. Put the foot down and I am going to sew. Now again, um, if you've got a, a machine that will sew the end in, that works really well. I'm going to remove that pin and I'm just going to sew straight the way down to the corner. All that remains to do now is to do the grand reveal. So, just trim these threads off. I think I've only used about five different machines making this piece so far. <laughs> so, on the back, you'll get this effect. And never cut anything off until you've tested that everything's sitting nicely. So, I like to give it a press on the back, like so. Just press that down a little bit. And then I'm going to turn it over and give it a press from the front. And the reason I used this block was because once again, if you've got such contrasting fabrics, it will, you can hopefully see the beautiful point and the mitre that we've got there. So that is how you do that part. All that remains to do then is you can turn it over. Some people leave this in. Um, I don't generally, uh, but you can do if you want to. So all you can do if you want to is cutting board. Take this to your cutting board. Make sure everything's sitting on top of each other. And all you're going to do is place your quarter of an inch line on your sewing line. Remove that. And I'm just going to flip that back again. And once again, I'll give it a little press. And there we go. So, that is the mitre on the front and this is what it looks like on the back. Now this has still got um, the seam pressed in towards um, the main body of the block. Okay, I've left this one here this one, I have actually pressed it uh, back out, so uh, none of the seams are going to show. I haven't yet removed the corners on this, because I may keep this and just use this as a teaching aid um, as and when we get to back to classes. Um, but I think you'll agree that um, it's a really nice way to finish um, a corner off, whether it be on a cushion, or um, within a quilt, um, it just gives it that little bit of finesse. And if you ever think about doing an attic window, 
um, like I say, there is the method where you just use um, a short strip and then a longer one here um, and you just um, do the corners where you snowball them. Um, it swings and roundabouts, but if you ever have done one before, it's worth now considering, now you see how easy it is, how flat it lays, uh, and it's absolutely doable. Um, I do feel sure that um, if you just take it a step at a time and work through it, this is a technique that you will probably be able to use on numerous projects. And it's sometimes nice, apart from learning lots of do, new different ways of doing blocks, this is another way to show your skill on how to finish a block off. So that's all for today. Thank you very much for joining us. Stay safe and hopefully we'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye bye for now.